Morning, good morning, gorgeous people. I hope you're having a great start to your Friday and uh, jumping in with a super fast video today. I'm gonna take off really soon. So it is really a, a quick video all about what is the key to winning the game of life. Now, some people might say, you know, winning is this or winning is that. I'm not here to discuss what success or what winning the game of life uh, actually means to you. That's for you to determine and for you to come up with. However, in order to do that, we need to be able to master our emotions. If we are not mastering our emotions, you might be super successful in the area of finance, you might be super successful in the area of your relationship, you might have all of the wonderful, amazing gifts that life can give us in a material sense and be miserable internally. The other thing is that unless we actually know how to master our emotions, how to shift and how to change our emotional state on a day-to-day -day basis when life throws us curveballs or things don't work out the way that we want them to be, um, or even just changing the way that we're actually feeling in order to be able to step into greater levels of success, whatever that may be for you, whether that's actually just feeling happier on a day-to-day -day basis, maybe that's communicating more effectively in your relationships, maybe that is uh, creating a beautiful intimate relationship. Maybe that's stepping in and overcoming your fear and truly, truly embracing your courage to build your business to the next level or even to start your own business, which um, can definitely take uh, a truckload of courage to put ourselves out there, to be vulnerable, to risk, uh, to, you know, in the face of failure or the face of um, perceived failure and all of those things as well. So definitely good morning, good morning. Hey, Erica, lovely to have you on and hey Deb lovely to have you on here I'm hoping I'm reading that correctly I should put on my glasses yes <laughs> it's really hard to see with this light shining in my eyes um so definitely is emotional mastery is is the aim of the game guys so like unless we're able to be able to really embrace ourselves and our emotions and quite often uh what i notice and i've certainly done this myself as well as notice that this comes up a lot for um, my coaching clients and people that i work with and just people on a day-to-day -day basis is the propensity that we have to want to push our emotions away or to disregard them or to say oh my god like i'm just or be frustrated judgmental on ourselves for how we're actually feeling emotionally. Your emotions are one of the greatest guidance systems that you've got. If you're not feeling emotionally great, there's always a deeper message within that. And once we've got the message, often either the emotional state changes or we can let the emotion go through processing it, through allowing ourselves to feel it as if it's moving through us uh, just like a cloud or just like a sensation, as opposed to actually getting really hung up on, oh my God, I'm feeling this thing or I'm I'm feeling this way or blah, blah, blah. Now, most of us have a couple of different emotional addictions in terms of we have a habitual emotional home that we hang out or that we live in. So um, if you were to think just for a moment of what would be the top three to five emotions that you experience on a day-to-day -day basis. And um, most people can name those quite easily. Um, if you've been used to numbing yourself out, perhaps um, through either you've experienced a lot of trauma. Now, trauma can be um, really... Um, I, I kind of want to give trauma like a, a different meaning as attached to because most people go, oh my gosh, you know, it needs to be something really significant or it needs to, and I'm not discounting any of those things. And trauma can also be any time that we are caused to question our lovability, our value our worthiness as a person or who we are as a person. So it's really important to acknowledge some of those things that can trigger us or that can really um, feel that it's taken away this sense of value or lovability within ourselves as well. Um, and often that is between the ages of zero to seven, we've either misinterpreted um, a situation or some of us have actually been through really traumatic uh, experiences as a child. I was super blessed as a child to grow up in a very loving, and supportive environment and I still had some of those misperceptions as a two-year-old as a three-year-old uh, you know being sent to my room and what I made that mean um, 
and then all of the emotional stuff that we then tend to bring into our current um, situation. And when we're emotionally triggered, it's always meaning that there's something that uh, is there to be healed or to be looked at that we're taking a past experience and what we've made that past experience mean. And now we're bringing that meaning into the future current experience because it feels the same or feels similar. So anytime that perhaps, you know, if you have some wounds around feeling rejected, feeling abandoned, feeling that you're not enough, uh, feeling that, um, you know, uh, I've got to keep proving myself or it doesn't matter what I do, it's never enough. Any of those situations, there's always um, a wound that is there that's been created in some way, shape or form. And, you know, abandonment can even be experienced of, um, you know, mum out and she's being a loving mum and everything else and, and she's doing the groceries and you look up and she's moved, she's gone around in the next aisle and you can't find her. So all of these experiences can go deep, deep into the subconscious mind and really impact us um, where then, you know, you might be acutely triggered if somebody doesn't turn up and you're kind of like, really angry um, as opposed to, oh, just getting kind of curious and going, oh, I hope they're okay. I wonder where they're at. Hey, let me just reach out and connect with them. So um, good morning, Mel. Lovely to have you on here, darling. And Diana, lovely to see you on here as well. Um, and totally okay, Deb, not a problem at all, honey. And so this is one of these things, you know, emotional mastery is absolutely the key to, to the game. Um, quite often people will not follow through because of how they're feeling and their state that they're actually in um, you know and even this morning uh, I even had like a little bit of resistance to jumping on and doing the live video um, I've had a bit of hay fever I'm not feeling like a hundred percent I had a huge day uh, yesterday traveling and it's just been like a big week overall um, and so yeah like again we can use our emotional state to block us or prevent us from actually doing the things that really progress our life or help us feel good or help us move forward in some way shape or form um, and you'll know this like if ever you've started a new, um, you know, clean eating regime or, you know, I'm not a big fan of saying clean eating um, because I don't really believe that food is good or bad or clean or dirty or wrong. Um, that's kind of like where the ego survival mind comes in. But, you know, like if you're wanting to take care or you're starting a new regime that is self-supportive and self-loving and then you're just like, oh, I haven't got the energy to, oh, I'm too tired to, or I can't be bothered. Um, and often we can really let some of those things slide that actually are truly supportive and helpful and help us shift and transform where we're currently at with life. It might be like, um, you know, you know that you really need to speak up in a conversation with somebody, you can feel some stuff going on internally and you need to share like how you're feeling or what your thoughts are or even what your opinion is or your unique perspective. And if we're coming from that highly charged emotional state, either A, they won't hear you because by being reactive in our own emotional state, we're eliciting defensiveness from the other person um, where they then try and, you know, and often this is what actually happens in relationships, um, any relationship, it could be a work relationship, it could be a friend it could be an intimate relationship, it could be a relationship with our kids or a relationship with our parents. All of those things can really play out at deeper levels when we're emotionally reactive because we're not actually, um, you know, both people are responding from their own woundedness and their own um, defensiveness about how they're actually feeling. And often we can just go, oh, I just wish they'd understand how I feel. And I can promise you, if you're feeling that way, the other person, 99.9% of the time, will probably be feeling the same way as well. So this is where, good morning, Cal, great to have you on, hun. Um, this is where like really learning the skills and the tools for emotional mastery really starts to transform our life at the deeper level. Now, the other thing as well with emotional mastery, um, um, if we are living in a state of stress, if we're living in a state of fear, if we're living in a state of reactivity, guess what that does to your um, sympathetic nervous system? It keeps you in that fight flight state the whole time. If you're living in lack, if you're living in scarcity, and sometimes that can be, I just don't have enough time. That can be where scarcity really starts to permeate through. Might be, oh my God, I haven't got enough money. I want to do all these things and I haven't got the money. And what we're actually doing is we're trying to change the external circumstances 
circumstance without understanding how we're actually recreating those same circumstances again and again and again. And if you've ever had Groundhog Day in intimate relationship, um, you know, I can definitely put my hands up there where you recreate the same thing. It might be with a totally different person and your next minute you're like, oh my God, I'm living the same relationship again. It is because you haven't shifted and changed internally. And when we do that, we're shifting and changing beliefs, which shifts and changes our perception, the way that we take life in, the, the meaning that we create around that particular event or circumstance, and therefore our emotional reaction or the way that we're responding to a particular circumstance. And in effect, it really is response ability, our ability to be able to respond to life, no matter what the situation, no matter what is actually going on there. Hey Cass, great to have you on honey. Hey Christy, great to have you on. And it's so, so, so important to be able to to sit with those feelings, to really understand what is going on, what is causing the stress, what is causing the angst, what is that that you're believing or what are you making that event mean? And often we do this so unconsciously, it literally happens in like 0.01 <laughs> split of a second where we have an experience, the mind goes back into the subconscious mind, it searches for an event or circumstance that felt the same and then we automatically apply that same meaning, oh, it must mean I'm not lovable. It must mean that I'm not worthy enough. It must mean that I'm not valuable. It must mean that there's something wrong with me. It must mean that it's all my fault. It must mean I'm responsible or I I need to, to, to change this or I need to make people happy or I need to, like, can you see how we, we recreate the same situations again and again without actually stopping to question, what am I making this mean? And it is our greatest freedom as humans to actually really determine what meaning that we make of anything. And this is where it really becomes the key to the game of life is because you can have two separate people in totally separate circumstances. Let's say um, two people. Um, hey, Nick, lovely to have you on, darling. Hey, Sue, lovely to see you on here, gorgeous. And Jerry, lovely to see you on here. Um, we can have two people have exactly the same life experience or very similar life experiences. So just imagine for a second, um, you had two separate people. They were in separate car accidents. Both of them lost a leg in that car accident. You can have one person walk away from that or not literally walk away. Sorry, that was like almost, um, yeah, a really bad, uh, that just kind of came out, sorry. However, you'll have that person come out of that circumstance and both of them, of course, initially will have huge, huge emotional reactions that's totally normal and totally human. But over a period of time, they will determine what that event specifically means for them, which is literally one person can um, come away from that situation going, oh my God, that is the worst thing that has ruined my life forever. And they become a drunk and an alcoholic in order to be able to deal with all of their emotions or, you know, obviously not dealing with them, but suppressing those emotions. And then you can have exactly the same circumstance or very similar circumstance with somebody else. And they go on to become a Paralympian um, and become so inspirational for everybody else around them. What makes the difference? The event was not what made the difference. It's the meaning that people have determined that that event is going to, how that event is going to shape their life, who they're going to become as a result of that particular event or circumstance. And the same is true for any event um, or circumstance. I have worked with people that have been through significant, like significant, significant trauma, and yet are going on and living very, very inspirational lives. And I've had other people that have, um, you know, by society standards, not had such significant trauma. And again, I, I really want to um, uh, use that, that statement that trauma can be signified as anything that causes us to question our lovability, our self-worth and our value as a person. Um, and so, you know, in terms of what society would determine as a traumatic event or circumstance, and yet they're feeling like they are so broken or that they are so unable to change or feeling like a victim of their life. And I don't mean that in any judgmental way. I've been there. I've lived it myself uh, in terms of feeling like a victim, feeling life was so hard and life was a struggle. And again, by recreating, by really tuning into that emotional mastery, that emotional wisdom for ourselves, 
we can really start to shift and change the meaning that we're creating on any event that shows up in our life. And these days, um, yes, whilst I might still have an immediate emotional human reaction to what's going on, it might be like, oh my God, that freaked me out or that scared me or that made me feel like crap or like whatever. And then in that second that I recognize I'm not feeling great, it's like, what am I making this mean? What else might this mean? What could be great about this particular circumstance? And the power of our life lies in the questions that we ask ourselves, because we're always asking ourselves a question. What am I making this mean? Or what does this mean for me? Is this a good thing? Is this a bad thing? And that's where our ego survival mind comes in to really shift and change those things. Um, and so emotional wisdom is literally, literally the key. And if you are feeling burnout from living in fear, if you're feeling burnout from living in stress, from anxiety, from, you know, just questioning so much around you, perhaps you're living in self-doubt or confusion or any of those things, um, that can be really, really, really challenging for ourselves, And it will continue to activate the sympathetic nervous system, leading to not only adrenal fatigue, but adrenal exhaustion, if that doesn't change. And uh, one of the, the greatest things that I'm really excited to share with you guys is my thriving program which is all about emotional wisdom changing our beliefs changing our perception of the way that we've actually taken in life and experienced life rewriting the narrative and rewriting the story of who you are and giving you the tools and the skills in order to be able to be a master of your own emotions and this changes everything because quantum physics this, the law of attraction is whatever emotional home that we're living in we will continue to attract the circumstances that equal that particular emotional frequency. So if you're living in frustration, you're going to keep attracting frustration. If you are living in sadness, you're going to keep attracting situations that end up feeling sad or the perception around that. And that's not to take away from any of those difficult life experiences um, that I know many people have had um, there's absolute compassion around that and lots and lots of love. And we also get to determine what we make anything mean, which gets to change and transform ourselves first internally, which then has us experiencing life in a very, very different way. And not much may change externally, although in my experience, everything changes externally. Um, however, you will be perceiving it in a way where you're easily able to access joy, confidence, love, playfulness, um, you know, excitement, enthusiasm, passion, all of those things really are difficult to access when we're living in a state of fear, stress, exhaustion, frustration, anger, resentment, any of those things. And we cannot fill up, we cannot give from an empty bucket. We've got to take charge of our own emotional state first. And uh, that's what I'm really excited about my program is really about giving you all the tools over a specific eight weeks and then how to implement and integrate that into your life as well. So if that sounds like something that could really, really serve you or perhaps there's somebody in your life that you really love um, and you know that they're having a really difficult time mastering their emotions, and I'm a highly emotional creature. I experience a lot of emotions every single day. I have high highs, low lows, and being able to ride those and experience the joy in the grief or experience the joy of the depth of living is really, really, really powerful as well. So have an amazing day, guys. Um, I'm going to pop a link below if this resonates for you or if you're curious at all, or perhaps you're experiencing really strong symptoms of burnout, fatigue, exhaustion, um, mentally um, beating yourself up or being really negative within yourself. Even when you know it's not you, you're normally a motivated, highly driven person um, and you're really struggling in this particular area. Please sing out to me. Um, I know... Um, you know, it's really, really transformational. It's transformed my life, being able to really master my emotions at that next level. And it's such a powerful, powerful life skill and something then that we can go on and teach our kids, which is an essential gift, you know, to give our kids the gift of being able to know that they can change their emotional state, not feeling a victim of their emotions or what they're making things mean. And I think in today's society, more than ever before, uh, we need the skills available to be able to live a very heart-centered, life because when we can give love and compassion regardless of how somebody else is showing up that is the the key to healing 
all of everything that's going on in humanity at this present time. Have an amazing day, guys. I've got a scoot and uh, thank you so much for tuning in. And as always, um, if this has been helpful for you, please uh, like, love or share this uh, with anybody that you think uh, could really be supportive for them as well. So have an amazing day and uh, thank you for your very kind comments as well. Good morning, Chris. Lovely to have you on here. And uh, who else have we got? Adam, lovely to see you on here. Helen, lovely to have you on here, darling. Hi, Vicky. Lovely to see you as well. Have an amazing day, guys. Loads of love. Bye for now.